What's up, you guys? Uh, sorry if my videos are a little crackly. There's something wrong with one of my cables, and it's just interfering with the signal a little bit, so I gotta change that out. So anyway, um, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this sound right here, so let me uh, just quickly play it again for you guys to hear. So... As you can tell, it's kind of like a valley type of electro thing, so it's very easy to make. And if, as you see on the channel right here, uh, there's not anything else on this chain. It's just massive by itself. Um, I do have this in a group, but everything on it is really here for not any sound design reasons, just for, you know, kind of general mixing and automation type of thing. So I just have a DJM filter cutting out the low frequency so it doesn't conflict with my kick, so everything beneath 200 hertz. Um, I just have my dimension expander, the plugin form, so it's the same one as in uh, that that's in massive, but I just like having the plugin form, um, you know, for my groups and stuff. So all dimension expander does is delay one side from another to make it seem much wider. So uh, again, you can get this from Xford.com. Uh, I've been talking about those plugins a lot in my last few videos. They're free plugins, so you know I've just figured I'd share the knowledge with some of you guys that didn't know about these. So you can go find that. Um, then there's this stuff. So this is from another video called uh, "How to Make Awesome Sweeps." So this is just here, not for sound design, but to automate uh, this little end thing right here. Uh, let me find it. So noise builder. So at the end of this like part it just creates a sweep so using the 8-bit shaper and a reverb it um you know creates this like distortion buildup. so again this is off most of the time as you can see so don't need to worry about that then there's a rack i have for most things so it's just again cutting out low frequencies again a compressor and a sidechain compressor to a uh, sidechain to the kick so that again my kick is really loud or really on its own and then I have a vinyl distortion which is right now not being used for anything it's turned off so we don't need to worry about that and then we have a EQ uh, so this one this might look a lot very different from EQs you guys use all you need to know that I'm doing here is I'm cutting out the 1k by like uh, you know around 6 to 9 dB on normal EQs uh, this one is around 3 or 4 for when I'm cutting it that's just because this is a really good EQ. Um, and the reason why I cut out 1K is because 1K is a noisy trouble frequency and it just, it builds up a lot. 1K is in like everything and just like low frequencies, it builds up quickly and it's kind of an irritating frequency. So if you can cut it out, it sounds really good. So I can demonstrate what the 1K difference sounds like. So, uh, you know, you can see I t dipped out 1K. So I'm going to turn this off. And we're going to hear this the way it was before the EQ. Uh, sorry about that. The distortion plate. Uh, let's play it from this part. Now I'm going to add it in. So you can hear that this sounds a little wider. It's a little bit. It's a lot cleaner, and it's just. It's gonna save my mix in the end. So uh, you know, without all that 1K that builds up. So that's pretty much it. And then just a limiter, just there for uh, you know, because this is an unmixed song, and I just want to contain all these groups before I mix it. I'll delete this later when the levels are all set. So um, you know, this isn't here to stay. It's just here for now. Um, anyway. Let's jump into Massive. So uh, Massive is pretty, it's a pretty simple patch. So what we're going to do is just going to go to new sound and uh, that'll give you the, a default, you know, uh, preset to work with. So first thing we're going to do is go voicing. We're going to set the 16 to 3. We're going to set it on this middle one right here. That's good for, you know, um, just playing one note at a time and kind of those kind of bassy type of things. And then we're going to set this to Legato Triller. Tiller. I hate this word because it's like thriller, but it's tiller. It's a weird word. Anyway, uh, then let's see. I have nothing on the oscillation tab, so uh, we're all good here. So let's go to our main envelope. So this is what it looks like by default on mine, on my version of Massive. So um, if it's different from yours, set it. This is like the main envelope for Massive, so you got to make sure this looks right. So just look at the attack level, release 
delay and decay levels and you know you'll be able to tell what's wrong if anything and so let's get, jump into our oscillators so oscillator one we're going to set this to a chrome and we're going to do the same thing with oscillator two so oscillator one and two are both chrome and uh oscillator one is a ben plus so right here and oscillator two is a ben minus plus so it's kind of like the ben minus and the ben plus but kind of halfway in between and now we're going to set the wavetable position around the 3 o'clock range, a little lower than that, and intensity all the way down. So what we're going to do with all the oscillators, we're going to bring the intensity all the way down for all of them. We're going to drag a envelope 1 into each of those and drag and hold on this box, click and hold, and drag out the blue part until it reaches the end of the parameter. So pretty much like that. So if you want to save some time, just add that envelope one to all the intensities drag the intensities all the way down and amps are all the way up on all these and they're all between filter one and two evenly so uh, okay anyway and then we're gonna drag that envelope two into each of these boxes for each of the oscillators um, but don't get ahead of me unless you want to and so uh, once you have your oscillator one looking like this go ahead and to oscillator two bring this up an octave so if you click option while in this box in or click option and hold you can go up and down octaves really quickly so kinda like this I'm just holding it on option you can see I'm going up and down octaves really fast so um also that holding on option will bypass plugins as you can see and if I do it a few if I click with option a few times it's going to uh, turn it off completely or get rid of it completely so I can just drag that back in so um let's see I forgot where I was. Okay, so yeah, one octave up. Wipe table position's a little bit higher than where it is in oscillator one. This is kind of around two o'clock, maybe. And like I said, make sure you got this on Ben minus plus. And now oscillator three is uh, this one right here under digital hybrid. We're going to bring this down one octave, so negative 12. Uh, and then we're going to set this to Ben minus. Sorry if you can hear my dogs. My dogs are just assholes right now they're fucking just noisy as hell and so uh anyway uh intensity we already got that we're wave table positions around the three o'clock and we're gonna put that envelope two there again and drag it up all the way so envelope two and envelope one are pretty much in the same positions just the knobs are kind of slightly different places for the wave table and so we're actually not using the modulation oscillator so i can go ahead and continue uh, yours doesn't sound anything like mine yet. I know that. So just wait a sec. Uh, we're almost there. Um, so what we're going to do now is add a little bit of feedback. So the way I did this was, uh, let me turn this macro down to here. So this is kind of what you might have so far. So what I did was I, let me bypass this real quick, this envelope one, and I'll get to the envelopes in a sec as well. So uh, what I did was I turned on the feedback and I kind of found a n really gross spot and then I used an envelope to control it so. I mean I kind of like the way it sounds just like that but now I'm going to add this envelope here. So it glides back down to zero feedback and it's a really interesting sound. And I'm going to drag this macro up all the way. I'll get there in a sec so um. So it sounds really cool. And so uh, envelope one, uh, so it's kind of a delayed attack. So decay and level are down all the way. This level's up all the way, and this attack is around here. So you see the peak of this is right underneath gate. And envelope two is kind of the same thing. Envelope two is uh, decay and level are down all the way. This delay is all the way down. The attack is not as far, is not as long as the other one. The peak is kind of around the R and linear, and really that just makes, I, I just like using envelopes more than LFOs, because LFOs kind of, they move back and forth, and what I like about envelopes is they kind of just move one way, and they have just a more natural movement to me, so I prefer envelopes, but I mean, I have nothing against LFOs, I use LFOs a lot, and for a lot of specific things, but envelopes are kind of my favorite, so um. Yeah, that's what's going on in envelope 1 and 2, so now you'll have all this movement stuff. 
the same way as mine. And now with the feedback, it sounds really wicked. So now it has like that that vowely pluck kind of thing. I could definitely imagine using like a sine wave and then using a wow filter to kind of shape a sound similar to this. But good thing is we don't need to add a wow filter, at least not for the valley stuff. So um, filter one now. Let's just do that. That's a high pass four. Uh, where the hell? High pass four right there. We're gonna set the cutoff around here. Attack uh, the reso. I mean, is straight where it is by default. And then filter two is a comb filter. Uh, we're gonna set the pitch around here, kind of a low pitch, a little bit of dampening, and feedback around here. So get it to look like mine. Uh, we're gonna make sure this is on parallel. So uh, and then we're gonna make sure these are up all the way. So that means we're just using the full volume for the filters. And now you can see that there's mix one and two. So right now this is on mix one, so it means we're just getting all the signal that's routed to filter one through filter one. And we're not getting any filter two. So that's where we throw in this macro here and drag it down. So the yellow kind of passes halfway, maybe one or two lines underneath halfway, and it's a really cool thing to uh, play around with. So nowadays with my patches for Massive, I like to make sound, uh, pat presets that kind of have a, a lot of versatility where I can kind of use, where I could just twist one macro knob and it'll just kind of morph the sound into different things and it really just is really useful for like trap and complex and things like that. Even dubstep where it, it requires a lot of sound design movement. Things that sound just crazy. So, you know, kind of like this. If we just move this, if you assign this to a knob on your keyboard, this macro 2, it'll sound really cool. <laughs> solo that for you guys to kind of hear. So it's definitely, if you layer this and do a lot of crazy stuff to this, this can be like a big, like electro sound. And so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's do the effects. So uh, we just have a little bit of tele tube. You can see where the dry, wet, and drive are. So just get that real quick. Pause if you need to. I'm going to continue to the reverb. In three, two, one. Uh, now we have you know low settings of dry, wet, and size and density. I think is almost all the way down, and color is all the way up. So copy that if you need to. Um, we're pretty much done. So we did all. Let me just check. So we did all the envelopes, the voicing, all this stuff. So yeah, we're we're done. That's pretty much a very easy thing to do inside of Massive. You might notice that my master volume is far down. That's because I don't like to be in the red inside of Massive. I don't care if you say that there's a limiter inside of Massive or you know, whatever. I don't like to clip or see red anywhere in my session. Um, that's just how I keep things controlled. So um, we're done. So, you know, thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you join my Dropbox project, uh, I'm sorry to say that I'm not going to continue doing that. I just didn't see enough people interested in it or contributing. So I'm just going to kind of stop it. Um, I'm not going to delete it, it's just, um, it, right now I'm not going to continue pushing that, and uh, if you guys have any questions or whatever, just contact me on Twitter or Facebook, all the links are down below. Um, if you didn't know this, on my Facebook there's tons of free stuff, like sessions and presets, and when I hit new milestones, like new, like another thousand likes or whatever, I usually throw in lots of presets, like hundreds of them, and things like that, things I made. Um, so, uh, thanks guys for watching, as always, and lights.